this thing live? I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> hey, everybody. I am on my laptop, and I'm, like, so used to going live on my phone. And so I'm like, I think I'm live. <laughs> oh, this is fun. So I did not go live this morning uh, like I like to do on Wednesdays for Word Wednesday because, let's just be honest, I didn't feel like waking up. So that's reality. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go live on my lunch break and just trust that maybe there's someone who needed to be on here at this time. So God is good. So I'm going to read the daily Proverbs. I say that because uh, there's 31 Proverbs, 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. And guess what? There's usually 31 days in a month. So um, I like to just read whatever date it is. So today's 28th. So I'm going to read the 28th Proverbs. And then we are going to read Titus because I don't know what God has in Titus. I really don't know. So I was like, God, where do you want me to, to read today on here? And I heard Titus and I'm like, Titus, I've not read Titus in a while. So we'll see what's in there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pray and then dive in to the word of God because I love the word of God. So Father God, I thank you so much for this day. God, I thank you for the opportunity to be able to jump on here and just get into your word. And God, I pray for all of us myself and anyone that tunes in, God, that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, Holy Spirit, that you would reveal the treasures and the depths that are inside your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Or as I like to say, yay men, because I like to celebrate. So Proverbs 28 says, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. I love that line. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Because of the transgression of a land, many are its princes, but by a man of understanding and knowledge, right will be prolonged. A poor man who oppresses the poor is like a driving rain which leaves no food. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. Evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand all. Better is the poor who walks in his integrity than one, who, than one perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Whoever keeps the law is a discerning son, but a companion of gluttons shames his father. One who increases his possessions by usury and exhortation gathers it for himself who will pity the poor. Gathers it for him who will pity the poor. One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Whoever causes the upright to go astray is in an evil way. He himself will fall into his own pit. But the blameless will inherit good. The blameless will inherit good. That's a good word. All of this is good. The rich man is wise in his own eyes, but the poor who has understanding searches him out. When the righteous rejoice, there is great glory. But when the wicked arise, men hide themselves. He who covers his sins will not prosper. But who, oh, this is good. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. So good. Happy is the man who is always reverent, but he who hardens his heart will fall into calamity. Like a roaring lion and a charging bear is a wicked ruler over poor people. A ruler who lacks understanding is a great oppressor, but he who hates covetousness will prolong his days. A man burdened with bloodshed will flee into a pit. Let no one help him. Whoever walks blamelessly will be saved, but he who is perverse in his ways will suddenly fall. He who tills his land will have plenty of bread. But he who follows frivolity will have poverty enough. A faithful man will abound with blessings, but he who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. To show partiality is not good, because for a price of bread, a man will tra transgress. A man with an evil eye hastens after riches and does not consider that poverty will come upon him. He who rebukes a man will find more favor afterwards than he who flatters with the tongue. Whoever robs his father or his mother and says, It is no transgression, the same is companion to a destroyer. He who is of a proud heart stirs up strife, but he who trusts in the Lord will be prospered. Mm. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered. He who gives to the poor will not lack, but he who hides his eyes will have many curses. When the wicked arise, men hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. So good. I love the word of God. So that was Proverbs 28. You know, Proverbs is the book of wisdom. And then I'm going to read Titus. No idea. Like I said, I mean, I've read Titus many times, but I'm not sure why God wants us to read this today. This is what he put on my heart to read. So I'm just excited to see what he has. So this is my mug. I posted this earlier. I don't know if you guys saw it. It's hilarious. So, well, the mug itself is, is awesome. I love it. It's hilarious because I got this from <laughs> a face. 
Facebook ad, like they bait me. I buy shoes off Facebook and Facebook ads. <laughs> it's like they know me and, and I'm well aware that they do. And I buy the stuff because I'm one of those people. I'm the reason they make the ads, but I love this mug. So I buy um, Starbucks Caramel Macchiato is my favorite. And I buy it like at Meyer, like a cold brew kind in the refrigerated section. And um, then I warm it up. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I don't know if people do that, if that's normal, but I love it. Because I live in a small town where there is no Starbucks or coffee shops. But my friend Dawn did open an amazing coffee shop called Refuge Coffee Shop in Quincy, Michigan. If you guys have not been there, if you're anywhere around... I highly recommend that you go there because it's an incredible atmosphere and their coffee is amazing. And this Friday, we're doing a stirred up event there and I am just excited and expectant that God is going to do something amazing um, in our midst because he's faithful and he is willing and wanting to do awesome things in our lives. So I'm excited about that. So if you're in the area, come to that too. So I want to read this really quick. I have, oh, look, it's actually not backwards. That's fun. Um, so it's Psalms 41 through 3. I got this stack of, like, scripture cards um, that I've been sending out to people. I actually got it from my friend Brooke, gifted me these cards, and now I'm using them to send uh, words of encouragement to people. And this one here I pulled out, and I'm like, yeah, I'm keeping this one. This one is so good. I'm going to tape it up somewhere. But it says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. This is so good, and I just, it, it just feels like my story because a lot of you know my story, but one small part of my story that I love sharing is that when I went through a season of pain and brokenness and just utterly being consumed with what was going on in my life and the confusion that was swirling and all of that I just really felt like my heart song was stopped and I remember being at work um one day and I had a coworker come up and he's like I just want to tell you I think you have the most beautiful voice and I was like oh thank you and I was like how do you know that I sing like honestly I was kind of like huh and he was like well I just heard you like the other day you're just walking through the factory singing and I was like oh my gosh like I remember saying right away my heart song has been restored and so I'm praying that prophesying that over you if you have felt like your heart song has been stopped that God is putting a new song in your heart and restoring that to you that joy the joy of his salvation there's a scripture that says restore to me the joy of your salvation and that is one thing that I have prayed a lot for people like God restore that to us restore that heart song and that joy of living um, again. And so that's my story. And that's why I love this scripture here. That he put a new song in my heart. A song of praise to him. Because I'm so thankful for the healing and the work that he has done in my life. And is continuing to do in my life. Because he's faithful and he's good. So. Really Cassie you guys are studying Titus. That's so fun. Definitely throw on some insight in here as I'm reading. Anna I cannot wait either. I'm so ready 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 god is so good go check out our website stirredupministries.com anna has been on there making some really awesome changes she's very gifted visually with creating things like graphics and flyers and just web website content and stuff she just makes everything look good so i assure you if you see something that stirred up does visually that looks good videos and things uh it's her <laughs> It is her, and I am cheering her on in her gifting because that is not mine. But, all right, let's read Titus. Chapter 1, Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which, accor which accords with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, underline that and remember it forever, God cannot lie, promised before time began, but has in due time manifested his word through preaching, which was committed to me according to the commandment of God our Savior, to Titus, a true son in our common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this reason I left you in Crete that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. If a man is blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children not accused of dissipation or insubordination, for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, 
not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, nor not greedy for money, but hospitable. This is really good. I'm like reading this and I'm like, Lord, this is what I want in a husband. Okay, you guys ready? You can agree with me in prayer right here. Hospitable, a lover of what is good, sober-minded, just, holy, self-controlled, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convict those who contradict. So good. And those are just characteristics of what it looks like to be appointed into uh, just like characteristics of what someone who's in leadership should be. And that's been something that I have been talking to so many people about or I've been hearing a lot about is uh, selfish ambition to do. There's another scripture somewhere that talks about do nothing out of selfish ambition. So my prayer and anything that I do that God calls me to, that it would always be with pure motives and out of a place of love um, and never from a place of, of selfishness. So, And I love the love chapter that says love is not self-seeking. So it's never about us. It's about him first and other people second. Oh, really wishing you would read a passage out of hesitation or <laughs> that's so funny um you know that would be a really good one I think you should do that from your podcast Jared which I wish you would start up again because I miss your podcast okay for there are many insubordinate both idle talkers and deceivers especially those of the circumcision whose mouths must be stopped who subvert whole households teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain one of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. Therefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men who turn from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but in works they deny him. I'm reading that again. That's deep. They profess to know God, but in works they deny him. And we know the word says that faith without works is dead. Dead faith. Our faith should be producing good things and fruit in our lives. And, man, obviously we never are doing the good works in an effort to get in good standing with God because that's not how it works. We're saved by faith through grace. It's not about our works. We cannot earn anything from him. And the Bible even says our righteousness is as filthy rags to God. Like, so yeah, there's nothing we can do. It's only the work of Christ and what he has done at the cross that his, and the resurrection and all of that, which I'm not going to get into all of that today, but it's his work, um, in us completely that, that makes anything worthwhile. So yeah, that's good. That's a word for us that professing to know God, but in our works, denying him. So examining our works, what are we doing? What are our motives? All of that. That's so important to keep in check and to make sure that we're, our hearts are staying pure and even asking God, search my heart, see if there's any wicked way in me. If there is anything in me, God, that is not pleasing to you, expose it, remove it. God, make my motives pure. It's so good and important to stay um, in that place. So, okay. I don't know if I read the second part of this, so I'm going to finish and then I'm going to hop into chapter two. It says, they profess to know God, but in works they deny him, being, a, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. But as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine, that the older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, and patience. The older men, the older women, likewise, that they may be reverent in behavior, not slanders, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works. I like that, a pattern of good works. Mm. Pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an op that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Exhort bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, to be well pleasing in all things, not answering back, not pilfering, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of 
God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. I love that. There's a scripture, I think in First or Second Corinthians, that says, your zeal has stir stirred up the majority, which obviously I don't like anything to do with stirred up because it's my ministry name and stuff, but I just love... I love that scripture because our zeal really can stir people, other people up when we're passionate and on fire for him and pursuing him with everything inside of us. People are either going to think we're crazy, which happens, or they're going to be like well, inspired by that. And so that's my prayer that that would be my life, that, um, that I would be zealous for good works. And I pray that a lot. God, just let me be about your business. I want to be like Christ was on earth to just be about your business, to do what you've called me to do, nothing more and nothing less. So good stuff speak these things exhort and rebuke with all authority let no one despise you and we are on chapter three which is the last chapter of titus boom shakalaka hope you guys are having an awesome day i'm gonna take a sip of my coffee so good so good all right chapter three of titus remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities to obey to be ready for every good work to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, hey, we hit on that, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. That's good that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. There's intentionality in that scripture right there, that we are intentional to do that, to maintain good works. And I talk about this all the time, but that returning to our first love. And we know in Revelations where it talks about that, where um, he is addressing Jesus talking to the church in Ephesus and saying, return to your first love, to your former works, the things that you did when you were, you know, first in love with him and, and just how abandoned and uh, I just have so much swirling in my mind. Like I just think about my own life and, and how I was and how I was just bold and unashamed, didn't care. And so I just always want to stay in that place of not being ashamed of him, not being ashamed of the gospel. And um, I was thinking yesterday about the scripture that says, you know, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before the father. And that's a very real reality. And people care too much about reputation. And honestly, like what's a reputation? What, I don't know. I'm just kind of at the point where I just don't care what people think of me. So if they think I'm crazy Jesus freak or they're like, whatever, you're over the top extreme. You're, you're a bit much Janice. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm well, I'm well aware of that. I've, I have accepted the fact that that is, that is who I am. And I love that about myself. So yeah, it's good. Careful to maintain good work. So let the Lord reveal to you what that means and how to apply that word to your life because it's good. Um, okay, but avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and striving about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the divisive man after the first and second ad admon admonition. I wanted to say abomination. It says admonition. Knowing that such a person is warped and sinning, being self-condemned. Mm, divisive people. That's something to pray about that we are not divisive um and that's something i do i pray over my church not that i see anything like you know of concern in that way but that is just an mo of the enemy is division like he is wanting to cause division in families and friendships and ministries and churches and so i pray against division in in those areas um because the enemy is 
always on the prowl, like a roaring lion. He is not a roaring lion because we serve the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's just trying to mimic God. But the, he's prowling around like a lion seeking whom he may devour. And his objective is to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's all he wants to do. And so God's really been speaking to my heart lately about being on the offensive. Like, just kind of got to this place where I'm sick of cleaning up the messes of the enemy and playing the defensive and being like, you know, if he, you know, attacks or does something, then, you know, I'm going to just trust that God's going to work it all out for good, clean up his messes, move on, like whatever, believe God for restoration, which all those things are good. But I'm like at the point where I want to be on the offensive. Like I want to be charging his camp and taking back what he has stolen from this community, from my church, from my own life, and just not always just waiting for him to come at me, but like going after him. So that's a whole other message that I could preach on because I am, I just think it's important that we do stay on the offensive and stay suited up in the armor of God and oh, so much praying in the spirit on all occasions, staying sober minded, girding up the loins of our mind. There's so much scripture that is just empowering us to stay on the offensive, not just defensive. So couple more verses here. When I send Artemis to you or Tychicus, be diligent to come to me at Nicopolis, Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter there. Send Zenos, the lawyer, and Apollos on their journey with haste, that they may lack nothing and let our people also learn to maintain good works, to meet urgent needs that they may not be unfruitful. That's good. That's good stuff because I don't want to be unfruitful. I want to be fruitful for him. Um, and was it John 15 where it talks about we are the I'm going to read that in a second. I'm going to go there because I feel like that's a word. All who are with me greet you. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. So that's the end of um, Titus. I'm going to go to John 15. I just love the word of God. So I pray that you do as well. And if you're in a season of life where it's hard to get into the word of God, I get that. Like I um have definitely gone through those times too and just staying consistent in it regardless of how you feel if you feel like it or not is it's it's going to make a difference in your life so even today like I was just um I had read like my devotional this morning which I get um christinecane.com go there and sign up for her daily devotional it's called first things first and it's just a quick little like scripture and teaching and just I love reading that first thing in the morning because it gets my mind going in the right way and then um, just spend the morning in prayer and things. But anyway, um, I, and then I went to work today and I'm like, man, I just, I just want to go home and get into the word. Like I need it, which I always need it, but I just extra, I felt like I extra needed it um, just to get into his word because it's so good and it just transforms us. And um, I'm actually, and you guys can probably see it in my eyes, but I'm just like exhausted. I have a lot of things going on in my family and things that are just weighing heavy on my heart, which I'm not going to get into, but you can definitely be praying for my family right now. It's going through some hard things. And so, um, that's just how I felt at work today. I had to go in and record some videos. And then when I hop off here, I have, uh, I have to link those in YouTube and, and some different things and grade some papers and things. So, but I'm like, I need to get in the Word of God, so I want to come on Facebook and just invite people to join me because I love the scripture that says, um, or not the scripture, the song that says, this is how I fight my battles, and like that, this is how I fight my battles, like this is my sword, and just reminding myself of God's love and his character and his truth constantly is so important. A couple nights ago, I actually went to bed and just played the Word of God while I was sleeping, and... I typically don't like doing that just because I don't really like, um, I just would rather have music on while I'm sleeping, but I don't know. I just did. And so I got through a lot of the Bible while I was sleeping. I think I got through all of a bunch of Psalms. I got through Proverbs, got through Song of Solomon. I was in Isaiah when I woke up, like halfway through Isaiah. So that was pretty cool. Just knowing that our spirit man never sleeps. So it was feeding my spirit man even while I was sleeping. So I love listening to the Bible on audio, too, when I just have um, time to do that. Like, when I'm getting ready in the morning or washing dishes or whatever, just throwing the word on because it's good and we need it. So, anyway, but I wanted to talk about that because in Titus it was talking about fruitfulness. And there's this 
this one part here. I'm just going to read 15. I'm going to read 1 through 8 here. It says, I am the true vine. This is Jesus talking. And my father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. So if you are going through a season of pruning where you feel like God is just like correcting things in you and shifting things and changing things, like rejoice in that. I know that's a hard thing to say to rejoice when you feel like, oh my gosh, like Lord, ugh, like God's revealing things in your heart and just correcting behavior and mindsets and things. But it says that he prunes us that we may bear more fruit. So it's a good thing even in the moment when it doesn't feel like that. It says, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless you abide in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Okay. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. And this is the part that I really want to like land the plane on. It says, by this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you, so you will be my disciples. So bearing fruit glorifies God. And we know like the fruit of the spirit that you can read about in the book of Galatians, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of those things, when we're bearing those fruits, it brings glory to him. Um, and, and ultimately, that fruit is for other people. It's, you know, not, not for us only. It's for other people. So I just love the word of God. So thank you guys for coming on here with me. I am so thankful for the community that God has given me, um, not just through social media, but... Um, well, I mean, all of you, I know in real life anyway, most of you anyway. So just thankful for community. Like we need community. It's so important to just keep each other accountable, to be able to encourage each other and spur one another on in the faith. We, we, we need that. I cannot imagine my life having gone through things that I've gone through, even the good times without having people there with me um, to walk through those things. So I tell you, I'm thankful for you guys. Thankful for you, Cassie. If you guys don't know Cassie, she's amazing. Um, such a gift of encouragement. And I cannot wait to see you in a couple weeks. I'm going to go spend the night with Cassie here soon. And I get to work on some writing because I'm working on my second book project. So believing God for um, anointing in that and just for a good flow in my writing because... I want him to inspire anything I write. So let me tell you, it's better that way. So anyway, I love you guys. I'm going to go finish up linking some videos in YouTube for a class and all those good things. So stay encouraged, stay in the word. Um, even when it's not easy, make yourself get into it because I'm telling you it is needed. We need it. So I will see you guys next time.